I'm Aaron. I'm a Dixie Bell content creator. We are live in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. As always, we're ready to go. If you're here, say hi. We are going to have some fun with a vintage dresser, and I hope that you were able to join us last Saturday night. We had a lot of adventures with projects then as well. Last night, usually Friday nights, I'm live on my Bowtie Treasures Facebook page, and I started a project where I put a one coat of paint on it, and today I've kind of got some different stages going so that I can show you all how. So thank you so much for being here. Holler at a friend, let them know we're here. That's always great to have a great company as we're, we're moving into our project. Um, again, last night on my Facebook page, I put one coat of chalk paint on this vintage dresser. And tonight we're going to do some shading, uh, layering, all the good things that will get this to its final state. Let me tell you a couple things. First of all, um, I'm used to color. I have a lot of paint around the studio. I'm like, let me just use this color because I have it and it's Dixie Bell's fall colors. There's possible that some of the retailers in your area might still have some of the fall colors, but I use the latte color. But let me just tell you that at the bottom of the screen, it says that I use burlap. Um, just to give you a little bit of a heads up. The, so this is latte. Latte is kind of a creamish, warm color. But let me also promote two other colors that would probably do the same job. If I didn't have latte, I would use burlap. And this is putty. Okay, so they're both really close colors to what I used. So I use latte, but on the screen, I'm gonna tell you I'm using burlap because if you can't get the latte, I would just go straight to burlap. It's very close. I just find that the latte has a little bit more red and I just used it because I had it around and it's really gonna be covered up quite a bit. So again, uh, hopefully uh, no, uh, no problems there. So if you don't have something like latte, try burlap, try putty. It just gives you a nice warm base coat. And what we call, what I would call is a neutral, uh, a mid value. So that's what I did. Let me just show you the project. This is where we are right now on my project. So I'm showing you kind of the completion of where we're headed so that tonight while I'm working on this, you know where, where we are. Uh, so this is kind of like a sneak peek to where we're headed. So if you're interested in this, you better stay tuned because I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, one of the things that the colors that I did use to accomplish this was let's we're going to say burlap and then next I use chocolate and then I use sandbar buttercream and then some haint blue. I'm a big fan of complement colors and the haint blue is going to be our complement. This little bit of a highlight bring in this little bit of a highlight right here is haint blue. This little highlight is bur uh, buttercream. But let me just tell you that this right here does not have buttercream. So if you, you decide how far you want to go, if you want to go neutral, you know, more of a toned down, then don't put buttercream. This is buttercream. So you can see how it just keeps getting lighter and lighter. And, um, so for the sake of demonstrating the buttercream, because I don't know that I really can do a lot on the other side, let me demonstrate the buttercream with you. And then we'll move to the front where I have different layers pro uh, uh, done so far. And I think that'll help you understand. So we're gonna be a little bit all over the place, but I think if, if you were to watch this live later on or even tonight, you'll understand uh, a, good, a good bit of how we accomplish that look and uh, where we are. So, um, so I'm about to use buttercream, okay? Buttercream is what I'm gonna consider my lightest color. You can go all the way to cotton or fluff if you really want white or something more neutral. And then you just need a brush to apply the paint. And then what I'm gonna be using is the Best Dang brush a lot tonight. You could use something like the uh, La Petite brush if you don't have such a big area. This is a nice flat canvas, so I wanna have that ability and but we'll use it as much as i can tonight i've got two of them but right now we'll just stick to one the next thing i have is dixie bell's mister bottle the nice thing about this is that you can you can do little quick squirts and you can also just hold it down and it gives you a longer one so if you have a lot of area to cover 
that extra little bit of um, longer squirt will blast the water will help. But you can see that I'm trying to go with this highlight all the way down the middle. Okay. Um, let me also just let you know that there is a time sensitivity here. We do want to make sure that if at all possible, the layers are good and dry, because as you rub this besting brush on there and it's wet underneath, you're going to reactivate and start scribbling out some of that previous work. So even if you said, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to heat gun it. Well, heat gun is, not, is only going to get the top surface um, dry. It's not going to get, it's like not all the way cured. So keep a misting bottle handy. You need that to be activated. I don't want the paint to dry. I have a, a damp cloth so that I can wipe off. And then if you cannot swirl this paint, it's not wet enough. Okay, so it's important that you judge your efforts by the movability of that paint. I painted this area earlier this afternoon, like a little bit after lunch, so it's nice and dry. And you're gonna probably find, or you're gonna need to be cautious on how much paint you put down, because you could put too much paint down, and then you really, you know, you're almost having to wipe it off. So you can go back and forth. You only have so much time before the paint starts getting sticky, because right now me moving this brush around is drying that paint out. You see how I'm kind of even, whatever it takes, and this, you know, you pick the brush that works for you. If you need to spray your brush, I'm just going for kind of a soft vignette. I don't want any hard lines. So if you get hard lines, you're looking to erase them. Okay, so it's not the end of the world if you need to put a little bit of paint on. But trust me, your paint's already starting to dry at this point, so be careful doing that, okay? If it starts moving other layers, I would stop and come back. I like to also, while I have some paint on my brush, sometimes I'll come back and I'll just hit some areas that I think might need a little bit of extra. I don't, I, I am doing my best not to dry brush this, okay? The only place that I'm bringing dry brush in is when I'm doing the haint blue. Let me show you up close, okay? So give me a second, I'll take you in closer. Do you see right there? It's a little dry. I have some, some right there. There's so many directions you can go with this, meaning you don't have to do this best dang brush blending. If you wanna do dry brush, and I've demonstrated that look before, that's perfectly fine. Okay, I wanna tell you about, so that was a quick, brief demonstration of where we are, where I'm going and how I demonstrated the buttercream section. Let's do one more buttercream area since I have the brushes already engaged, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna be moving around a lot, so hang in there. <clears throat> this section right here, I'm going to consider, consider ready for buttercream because I did most of the steps on it. So same principle, let's give it a good mist. Remember, this isn't a bad look as far as the value, but if you want more value, you need a lighter color. And right now, and I'm gonna demonstrate it in a minute, this is sandbar, okay? So that's the furthest I've gone. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of this buttercream, and then I'm gonna use the besting brush, and I'm just going to circle it. This is where I was saying you could use a La Petite brush if the besting brush wasn't getting into the grooves that you want. Okay. And so I've just faded that out. And if you want, like I said before, take your brush that you just had. A, most of the paint's off of this brush. You could come in here and maybe hit a couple areas if, you, if they're not where they need to be. And move that around. The idea is that I'm going for a soft, soft feel. I don't want dry brush. Miss your, miss the be, um, miss the, your besting brush if you need to. You don't want to spray the piece after you get 
the blending on. This is not blending, okay? Well, I want to I want to be clear. I'd call this shading, vignetting. It's because I'm not blending two colors. There's only one color that's currently wet. All right, so let's put the buttercream away. I think because my colors are not gonna be dry enough for me to use this again tonight, I have demonstrated the lightest value that I will be putting on my piece. So we're kind of working our way backwards a little bit, okay? So I'll let that dry a little bit. Here, <clears throat> here is chocolate. So remember, we'll consider this buttercream, which I actually use latte, but your mid value cream, this is the first coat. This is me using chocolate. And I'm gonna demonstrate that over there. So we're working our way backwards a little bit. I just wanted to demonstrate all the steps because I couldn't do all of it in one setting. So let me show you then how I'm going to use sandbar on this piece. Let's pull in a one inch brush. <clears throat> and you can, uh, let me pull you in a little bit. Like I said, we're gonna kind of go in and out a lot. But let me show you how kind of messy this is. Do you see how it's drippy? Even down below, there's drips. I, th that's optional. If you want it to be clean, and smooth and buttery and cloudy and vignette then I would, when you put the chocolate on, I would do the feathering on that as well. But I'm going with the idea that I like to have a little bit of that, um, grunge may be the right word, uh, irregularities is another word, so you choose. This is all optional. Uh, I just liked the irregular, non-precise approach is, is what I'm going for here. And I'm gonna work down here because I don't wanna get the top section wet. And unfortunately, unfortunately only because it's harder, but the drawers slide into the groove. So I'll have to occasionally pull the drawer out and work on the sides. First thing let's do is let's, um, I'm gonna use the Mr. Bottle. I, you want a wet palette. Let's open the container. That's always helpful, right? Hope you guys are all warm tonight. Probably the coldest day of the year for us here in Pensacola, Florida last night. I think our wind chill was a blistering 19 or so, but um, it was a really nice day, but we don't have any clouds or any precipitation that could be a problem. Okay, so this is um, sandbar. And my goal here on sandbar is to actually cover up the chocolate so I'm a lot of that mess is going to go away and that's we've kind of talked about it earlier so on this one what I don't want is I don't want um, pure paint you you want a wash more of a wash in fact you might even you might even try applying a wash but I'm going to put more paint towards the middle than I am the sides and what you're going to find here is that the sandbar color I'm, I'm going to lightly put it on the sides you see how i didn't cover it all up keep it wet now i'm going to work my besting bru uh, besting brush this is where i'm softening i'm trying to get rid of any of the brush strokes because I don't want dry brush. I want a, a, a vignette soft feel. So you're just trying to, and all that paint that is getting on the brush, I'm rubbing over the chocolate where I didn't put a lot of paint. And I'm almost creating like uh, what I would consider somewhat of a paint wash by doing that. So you can see how the intensity of the chocolate is going away. You'd have to look pretty close to see all those drips and irregularities, but I want it. You might even suggest, you might even find that maybe don't cover up the corners too much. If you want to use a rag to wipe it off, that's fine. 
when it all dries, you will see some of the chocolate. There's no avoiding that, and I want that. Okay, so here's where I would pull the drawer out, because what I don't want is a line right there. And I'll bring my brush back, give a little bit of mist. Don't be afraid of working wet. I posted a piece on the Chalk Mineral Paint Group this morning or this afternoon of a piece that I really just painted one coat. Um, and I just kept it simple. Simple's fine. This is not so simple, but this might inspire a little bit of layering and creativity that you might have. And every piece that I do, as much as I think I'm doing something different or something the same as before, it always comes out different because every piece is different. Every color I choose is a little different. So you see the difference between this drawer and that one? I would never finish that. that I would never try and be done with that. This is going places, right? This is the look. If you need to, come back with a little bit more of the sandbar. If you feel like maybe you didn't quite get enough. But guess what? I have buttercream still to come. So don't make the sandbar work as hard as the buttercream can for you later on. You see how I'm fading all that? Looking really good. So let me pull this one out and push this one back because I want to be careful. Uh, this is the whole thing where the misting bottle can spray drops of water on paint and, and kind of leave some unwanted textures, but I'm not super opposed to that. I just don't want too much of that. Okay, so let's, um, let's do this one because it's the only one left that we have before we move on to the chocolate part. So like I said, we're working backwards. If you feel in this technique, if you feel like your painting, uh, your painting is thick, you don't have enough water. So it might take two or three mistings of water. You want it to be transparent, translucent, and put the bulk of the color where you want your highlight to be. I'm choosing to have the highlight be in the middle and then I'm trying to fade out towards the ends. All right, so we're going to... The fun thing about this technique is that you can, you can substitute any colors. We can do the same technique in a teal palette, a blue palette, yellows, you pick. The premise is put a medium color down and then accent or bring in the dark color in the crevices and then add some highlights. That's the principle we're doing right now. So you're, you're kind of doing a wash right now. And how much you cover up is up to you. My very first this morning or this afternoon when I put my first color on there, I had a little too much paint. And it kind of surprised me and I quickly used my rag to kind of remove it and then I realized I was doing a bit of a wash. I'm like, that's not so bad. So if you're not making accidents and having surprises, you're probably not discovering much. And it could get a little boring after a while. So this is, um, this is just a fun way to, to have to work on your piece. All this paint that I'm putting on is going to take time to cure and dry. So what I don't want to do is I don't want to work buttercream into this tonight. It's even if I bring out my heat gun and dry it, when I start rubbing and putting pressure with this natural bristle brush, I'm going to mess up that, that, uh, that look. So be very careful. So I'm not doing any buttercream there. Um, I do see that I probably need to do some work in here. But keep in mind that I could always come back and do the, the, the horizontal parts after the drawers dry because I don't want to get this wet while I'm... Does that make sense? So it's a little bit of strategic work. One of the things you'll notice that I also did was the whole bottom all the way across 
here and I don't know that I'm quite ready to do what I just did all the way across. So uh, in fact, I don't think I did chocolate all the way down here. So let me, I'll come back and do the bottom probably off camera. So that's, I've demonstrated buttercream and sandbar. Now let's demonstrate chocolate. I'll come back and do haint blue um, on this top drawer because that'll be nice and somewhat drier by the time we get to it. Okay, this is the fun color because chocolate, applying the chocolate should be loose, wet, and quick. Isn't it crazy just to see the, the difference between this side and the only one color? It's, this is the having fun, adding depth, doing something that's original. This can never be done again. Ne you know, if I had you all paint this color, we could do it over and over again. This can never be done again because it's, Every time you touch it, everything you do, it's going to be, I feel like I'm about to sing a song. <laughs> Talk about 80s night, right? Okay, so let's, here's, here's the thing we're going to start. Water again. So I'm just going to put a lot of water down. Other options to consider is to put some paint in a container, add some water, and thin it out if you don't want to use a lot of misting. What I'm trying to do with this chocolate is get it into all the, the parts that are deep. Um, if you want to say I'm, I'm simulating a buildup of dirt, that's fine too. Remembering that you don't have to be precise with this. You're just trying to get paint on there because you're going to cover it up later on with sandbar or whatever color you choose, right? So I'm not going to really focus too much on like the middle, you see how I'm, I really am just making a mess in a good way. Have your water bottle handy. If you ever feel like it's getting too thick, water it down, spread that water out. Use a rag if you have to. Like right here, I've already put kind of work on that side. So I'm gonna dab some of that out. And the cool thing is when you have little things like this, just let the water drip. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just gonna add some fun to it. I was having fun the other night, or last night, because I kept finding places I forgot to paint last night on my Facebook page. If you wanna see me paint this, the, the base cabinet or the base color, Facebook, Bowtie Treasures Facebook page, you'll see, you can see it there. And sometimes I'll use my rag to add a little texture or I call it sometimes my eraser, just remove. if You've got too much buildup. You're talking about adding depth, right? So find ways to add depth, sponge it off, whatever works. So let's look at this section here. If I give it a little mist, sometimes if you come back and just give it a little bit of a brush encouragement, um, I find that it takes more than one spray to, like the first water grabs the paint, the second spray softens it, and the third one starts running. Okay, I really want this front to run a little bit more, so I'm gonna give it more water. So I'm being liberal with the water. This is where I was saying a while ago, if you, if this is too much work for you, then I would start with a, a container of wet paint and it'll move faster for you. Let me pull this out because remember I need to, I need to do the, the, everything like this because it's, I don't want to come back to it later and have a bunch of hard edges. So I'm putting chocolate on the sides. This, keeps it dark and neutralized. And I can wipe some of this off. I can let it drip if I want. Right now I'm just, just painting it on there. Okay, like here, I'm just gonna take my rag and let, almost like wipe it off, but I'm just thinning it, that paint out so it's not so intense. 
and I'll just close it. But use your brush, use your rag, encourage that paint to move, knowing that all in all, we're going to cover a lot of this up. But I think that little movement keeps it cloudy and soft. And, and like right here, I've got this really deep, dark chocolate. I don't want it to be that dark. So I'll come in with a rag once in a while. And this is adding texture and depth. This is really great stuff. So use your rag to help that. Remember, this is where we're headed with it, but you got to do this first. At least, it, at least for this piece, right? Okay, down below, I'll put a little bit of color down here. Just to kind of keep this effect going all the way across. I may have put on more paint chocolate than I expected, but I'm really kind of happy with where the, the middle is the focal point. So I'm okay if the middle has a little bit more drama. Put some more in the crevices. I don't want any of the crevices to be left untouched. So. see down here let's step back a little bit you can see down here it's getting a little bit much right there I'd like to lighten it up towards the middle a little bit notice I'm not dragging the brush I'm dabbing because that's gonna add the texture and if if I drag it it's going to almost act like a brush and I really don't want streaks so so on the right is step two on over here is step, uh, these two is step three, that is step four. Let's talk about step five, and that is paint blue. So this has the buttercream, you remember that? So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a touch. This is an old brush, and I'm just going to come in and this one, I actually don't mind it being a little bit of a dry brush. This, this dresser has texture, like probably intentional texture. So I'm just kind of dragging. It's very faint, but that's what I want. So I want the hate blue is providing a complement color to the eye and it's just It's keeping this casual, rugged may be the wrong word, but this little dragging of the brush is adding high highlights. Highlight would be the lightest point of a piece. Let me show you where else I've done this. Okay, so we'll take a ride. You can see right on the corners, do you see that highlight? That's all paint blue. So you're just looking to and this is totally extra, not required, but you're just looking to hit the high points. And it's gonna highlight, accentuate some of those pieces. My lights are, I've adjusted my camera so my lights are washing it out a little bit. So from a distance right now from my eye, I can see a, a cool temperature highlight. It's better to me to do that than come in with fluff or cotton and it's too bright. So when this piece, I photograph this piece, it has deep darks, not super deep, and then it has nice highlights. But look at how it glows, right? So this part right down here does not have the buttercream yet. This one does. So it's just, I'm going from dark to light. This is a, a good discussion and illustration of value and layers and layers and layers but 
I've shown you how I've done it. How's that look? What do you think? It's going to be really great on camera. I think it's, someone's going to love it. I would not sell this, okay? Um, but I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I'm here in the studio having fun again. I'm glad you joined us and stuck with us. And as a content creator for Dixie Bell, I'm always here to help demonstrate processes, techniques, give you some energy and creativity for your projects. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Y'all take care. Stay creative and do something awesome. We'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.